having seen the notion of a simplicial complex, let's turn to the idea of a subcomplex, where, roughly speaking, a subcomplex is a complex within a complex. What is that? What do I mean by that? To formalize that, let's think in terms of faces, as we did before. Definition. A subcomplex of a complex K is a set of simplices L within K such that the following holds. If tau is a simplex of L and sigma is a simplex of K with sigma being a face of tau, then sigma must be within L. Now that's a complicated if then statement. Get the logic right. Group all of those terms together under the if. They all have to hold. If, whenever that happens, then sigma is contained in that subset L, then L is a subcomplex. Said more simply, L, thought of as an abstract collection of simplices, is itself a simplicial complex. For such a collection, such a subcomplex, it has a dimension, just like the complex in which it sits. The dimension of a subcomplex L is precisely the dimension of L thought of as a simplicial complex in and of itself. What about some examples of subcomplexes? Take your favorite simplicial complex and consider the following. The one skeleton of a complex consists of all the vertices and all the edges. And that's it. That is the graph on which the higher dimensional simplices sit. It feels very much like a skeleton for the simplicial complex. The one skeleton is in fact a subcomplex because you've got all the vertices in there as well, and they form the boundary faces of the edges. Now, since that one skeleton thought in and of itself is just a graph, that means that the one skeleton is one dimensional, as you might guess. Can we keep going? Oh yes, we can talk about the two skeleton, the three skeleton, the K skeleton of a complex consists of all the simplices of dimension K or below. So you take all the vertices, all the edges, all the two simplices, keep going up to and including all the simplices of dimension K. Now you gotta be careful here. Sometimes you make the mistake of thinking that the K skeleton is just the K simplices. No, 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 no. You gotta include everything of dimension K or below in order to satisfy this subcomplex condition. You need all of the faces. For a final example, consider a K simplex as your simplicial complex and look at its boundary. We saw this previously. This consists of all the faces of that one open K simplex. That boundary has all the K minus one dimensional simplices and the K minus two dimensional simplices. Keep going, keep going. All the edges, all the vertices, it's got everything of dimension less than K. This is a subcomplex. It is a subcomplex of dimension K minus one because of those front faces, those K minus one simplices. These are just a few examples. There is so much more that you can imagine. Think of any simplicial complex, some big thing, and then start looking at subsets of it that satisfy this property of containing all their faces. That is going to give you a potentially interesting subcomplex. The following is a fact. It's a little fact, but it's still a truth. Here it goes. Any finite simplicial complex, no matter how big, no matter how complicated, no matter how convoluted, any finite simplicial complex can be realized as a subcomplex of some sufficiently high dimensional simplex. Just one simplex, as long as the dimension is high enough, there's room to pack in any given simplicial complex, as long as things are finite. Is that a surprise? 
I don't know. It's maybe not that much of a surprise. If you want to think about this, if you want to prove it, think inductively in terms of dimension and begin with the vertices, with the zero skeleton. Ooh, what's that mean? Now, this may strike you as something deep, something potentially really useful. I'm not so sure that it's all that useful, but it's nevertheless worth thinking through on your own. But for now, let's go back. Let's think back to our definition of a subcomplex and interpret it in terms of the face relation a little bit more deeply. One way to rephrase things is to say that a subcomplex is a collection of simplices closed under the face relation. That condition, that idea of being closed under the face relation leads to a definition of closure. The closure of a set of simplices, k prime, in some simplicial complex k, is the smallest subcomplex L that contains k prime. So L subcomplex sandwiched between k prime and k. That's what it means to take the closure of k prime. We add in all of these simplices that make it into a subcomplex. That's really just a rephrasing of what we saw in the definition of a subcomplex in terms of the face relation, but it allows us to rethink about subcomplexes as precisely those subsets of a simplicial complex that are equal to their closure. And that's a perspective that will come in handy. For now, let's think. Let's think about it. What do we have to do? How much work is there in achieving closure? Let's say we've got a simplicial complex and we take a single one simplex. Just that guy, that edge. What do we have to do to compute its closure? Well, we need to add all of the faces. In this case, we need to add two vertices to close up that single edge. Okay. What if we have a single two simplex inside of our simplicial complex? What do we have to do to take its closure? Well, we have to add, let's see, one, two, three edges. We need to add those three one-dimensional faces. Aha, I see a pattern. Oh, but wait, I need to remember. There's more than just those three edges that act as faces. There are vertices as well, right? Those edges need to have their faces. So there's a total of three edges and three vertices. Aha, so for one simplex, we needed to add two things. For two simplex, we need to add three plus three, six. I wonder what happens in general. What happens with a single K simplex? How much do we need to add to take its closure? Ooh, I think that relates to something else we were talking about recently. Try to figure this out, but before you do, try to guess. Is this a linear function of K? A quadratic function, polynomial, exponential, something worse. What's it going to be? And then try doing an inductive proof. That's going to be a good exercise. One final definition associated with subcomplexes relates to a sequential version. We're going to take a collection of subcomplexes that nest into something defined as follows. A filtration of a simplicial complex K is a nested sequence of subcomplexes. We start off, let's say, with nothing. Then we have a subcomplex F1 of K that sits inside of a subcomplex F2 of K. Then F3, we keep going, we keep going until at the top, we have K itself. This sequence of subcomplexes, always growing, always growing, is a filtration. The number of such terms, in this case n, is called the length of the filtration. Now to make sure that length is well defined, what we're going to want to do is make sure that all of these terms in the filtration are non-empty and distinct, so that from step to step to step you're always growing. In that way, the first term in the filtration, f1, non-empty, 
the last term, Fn, is all of k. That's going to give us a well-defined notion of length. Okay, that's what a filtration is, but why? What is the goal? Why are filtrations important? Why are we bringing them up now? What are we going to use them for? One filtration that is absolutely essential in topology is the filtration of a complex by skeleta. Looking at the zero skeleton that sits inside the one skeleton, that sits inside the two skeleton, all the way up until the top dimensional skeleton. That is a very important filtration for any finite dimensional simplicial complex. But there's much more. One of the most useful constructs in topological data analysis is beginning with a point cloud and thinking of those data points, let's say in a Euclidean space, as being a zero skeleton of a simplicial complex. A simplicial complex that is grown inductively by connecting together vertices that are within a certain distance, then filling in higher dimensional simplices. Then we keep going, we keep going, increasing the distance parameter that we use to connect data points. We've hinted at this before as something called a via torus ripped complex, and we'll be giving examples of this later for now. It's worth pointing out that this has a natural filtration associated to it. As you increase the parameter you use for connectivity, you're adding more and more simplices until eventually you stop and you have your full complex. That may or may not seem all that useful yet. We will see just what we can do with this type of filtration.